Okay, so that's your uh, that was the foreground tree. Now let's go into the background trees. So as you're coming through here, one of the things that causes objects to recede is their edges. And we're very much about the edges and the colors. The colors have to become softer like the background, and then the edges have to disagree, decrease. In other words, you can see more, more sharp edges, what we call found edges, as objects come forward. And then as they go back, they get blurry, okay, as atmospherics take over and everything, and light uh, and water vapor ven bends the light and everything starts to look a little bit blurry. So they get lost and the edges maintain softness. So if I was going to say this is a tree right back here, get impression, and I want to put one right in here, I got to paint one right between this one and this one here to get a, a good depth. And that's what a good landscape painter will do. If you put the three objects in, if you have at least three planes, then you'll have more visual depth in your painting. So what I want to do is, it's also going to be descending down here in size. Let's just say I set a vanishing point right here, a point on the horizon where everything is going to be. And so the size of this will go up like this, and you don't have to be perfect, but so if I set one right into there, it's got to come up about, right about up into into this size right here, maybe right about here. If it was going to be the same type of tree, it would be about this height. And so you can use whatever you want, some of the sky color and some of your browns, very softly. It shouldn't be as harsh as the forward browns here. But if we ske lightly sketch in, allowing a little bit of the sky to come in, the tree will start to set here back. So you can see a little bit of the sky coming through, which is what I want. I don't want it as dark as this one. Uh, we can put a little more color working into that one, though, just a bit here. But we want it back, and we want to put in some, you know, edges and stuff like that here, and some ideas and stuff, but we don't want to get specific. So I'm going to use my color softly, use the brush, and just lightly sketch. And you can, you know, I'm using more of the bristle this time rather than the hard edge of the of the synthetic so that the edges of everything I do here in this tree stays very very soft here so I'll do that and a few other things now you won't pick up detail you won't pick up a whole bunch of fine little branches that you would pick up like onto this one here you'll pick up little branches and stuff coming out you won't have that here on this one because they're getting lost into the into the painting you'll pick up a few of them but not very many here as we as we're setting it back then as we go to colors we're going to put in areas of colors. Let's go with a, a water this down, or actually I add extender to it to thin it out, the color that I want, and just a little on the brush, and we'll rouge in the tree here very, very softly with this. We'll still kind of have a feeling of the planes here of the tree. We'll allow a little ground to come through here and there, but we'll have so we'll have some feeling of the planes of the tree. But the colors will be softer, a couple of them are crossed. The colors will be softer here, heading more towards that background. So then we'll build a little bit more, but not as dark as you would have here. And we'll bend and we'll ruse more areas of color, more of an area of color here, rather than specifics. So it stays softer. The thing is, you gotta keep everything softer. You want to run through some of your colors, imagining some of it becoming a little more like the sky. And, you know, tap the edges if it gets a little bit too much. And even work into some of your lighter colors here into the front. But, again, you've got to imagine this is going further back here. And so the colors have got to get softer. So you'll have a little bit here and there into that tree. Maybe a little bit of softer shadow here, coming up here and there. And again, watching that. If you wanted to put another one back in here, you could put a you know another smaller one coming like right in here. Just an impression of it. Even heading right towards the, the background here. And of course, I wouldn't set up a landscape just like this. I mean, this is just for painting purposes here, but you know you can get the idea that, this, that it's going back. You can get that depth to it. You do want to set in co ground contact lines. Uh, in other words, you want to bring the ground into contact with the tree 
And so, you know, we'll take some of these darks and, and apply it like right up in through here. And you can see as I build this dark up in here, I'm setting the tree down onto the ground here. So we do want to have some of that happening. The contact lines are very important here. There we go. As that sets into the our tree. Pulling the, you know, some lines, like if I make a strike of color coming through like this and carry it on this side, that's a great way to add some visual interest, like there's something carrying through the tree. Here, don't just start at the tree and stop it there. You want to, you know, move things through here. And so the fronts of the of your trees here, as you as you paint them, the ones in the front are going to have more details and stuff than the ones uh, further back. And that's basically what you want to uh, you want to concentrate on as you paint your trees here, just little bits of that going through, and so you get that visual depth. So it's kind of like the same concept, but it's just overall everything softer, everything allowing more of the background to go in and it's really easy if you just put on a little wet sky and paint right into the wet sky okay on to the next technique